Howdy everyone. Now, my late father was a great influence on me and did a lot of cool things, but he also had a bit of a habit of collecting old junk, and among his things, I recently received this old M42 mount budget lens from the 1980s, the Hanimex 28mm f2.8. Hanimex were a distributor of very low budget optics from all over the world, and this particular lens was made somewhere in Korea. It can be found on eBay for about £25, and it's very easy to find adapters which can get old M42 screw mount lenses onto almost any camera system. The M42 system was pretty comprehensive in its day, so I'll be adapting this one onto my 45 megapixel Canon EOS R5 camera. There's not much information about this lens on the internet, although reviews of it are generally mixed to scathing. Reviews of the multi-coated or MC version of the lens seem to be a bit better, this is an older version though. It's a bog standard wide angle manual focus prime lens with a rather average maximum aperture of f2.8, so there's nothing particularly interesting about its parameters. It's mostly made of metal, feeling nice and solid, and it's a little weighty at just under a pound. At the rear is an aperture control ring. There are six iris blades to the aperture mechanism, and above that is a rubberized manual focus ring, which turns very smoothly with a very long throw for a wide angle lens. The lens shows a little focus breathing, zooming in a bit as you focus more closely to your subject, as you can see here. The lens has a 62mm filter thread. You don't want to use filters that are too thick, otherwise, you'll get a bit of vignetting. This copy of the lens came with a plastic, slip-on lens cap, which may or may not be a replacement for the original, I don't know. Overall, it feels like a typically decent quality manual focus lens from the 80s here, simple in its function, but tough enough to hammer roofing tiles with. Well, let's move on to image quality. As I mentioned, I've mounted it here onto a Canon EOS R5 with its full-frame 45 megapixel sensor. At f2.8, image quality is absolutely appalling in the middle of the image, soft with almost no contrast at all, and with a very cool colour cast to it. The corner image quality is jaw-droppingly weak, absolutely useless. It's top down to f4 for a little more brightness in the corners, but it's still like trying to find a ghost in a room full of smoke here. Over in the middle though, contrast has returned, and sharpness is just okay. At f5.6, sharpness is excellent in the middle, and the colours have warmed up a bit now, looking more normal. The corners are still dreadful though. Here is f8, f11, and f16, where some kind of image is finally beginning to emerge, albeit with plenty of chromatic aberration. So yes, that is not exactly one of the better performances I've ever seen from a camera lens, in fact, it could be the worst performance from what is meant to be a serious lens in the history of this channel. Even people shooting on 35mm film would have been pretty unimpressed here. Now let's take a look at vignetting and distortion. We see just a very slight barrel distortion being projected here. At f2.8, the very edges of the image are looking pretty dark. Here's f4, f5.6, and f8, where the corners have finally brightened up fully. Now let's take a look at close-up image quality. This lens can get you as close as 40cm to your subject, which isn't very good, really. At f2.8, the close-up image quality is as bad as ever. f4 is still very weak, although if you stop down to f5.6, that image quality becomes good again. Let's see how the lens works against bright light. This copy of it is not multi-coated, unlike the later MC versions of it, and it really shows, with very strong flaring of various patterns being visible against bright lights here. Now, I didn't bother testing this lens for coma levels, the corner image quality is just too poor to even get a result, so let's move straight on and look at Bokeh. It's not that easy to get out of focus backgrounds with a 28mm f2.8 lens, but when you do, this ones look particularly busy, really quite ugly. Overall then, 
Well, this is quite easily the worst lens I think I've ever tested, failing miserably at virtually every test I could throw at it. I am surprised that optics could be this bad even in the 1980s, and I'm gutted to think that someone, possibly a member of my family at some point, actually paid full price for it at some time or another. Things have moved on in the world of camera lenses in the past 40 years, thank goodness.